Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my channel, Cosmic Insight Astrology. I am your co-pilot, Christina. All right, if you're new to my channel, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Today, I'm here with a new podcast, and I'm going to talk about, actually, the Capricorn full moon, which is going to take place on June 22nd, and it's going to take place in one degrees and seven arc minutes in Capricorn. Uh, and it's also going to square Neptune and the full moon itself. It's also going to conjunct Icarus and Ixion. So we're going to talk about those two asteroids and we're going to talk about the ruler of the full moon, which is Saturn. And it is, um, Saturn is conjuncting Nessus during this time. And we're also going to talk about the vertexes and the... Um, what is that? The Sabian symbol as well, and also a fixed star, which is Piccolum, which is uh, in tropical zodiac. Um, it is uh, at one degree Capricorn, so it's also conjunct the full moon in Capricorn. So if you're new to my channel, uh, you don't know that, but I'm always uh, starting out with a quote. So today's quotes, what I thought you guys, uh, what I um, found you guys, it's uh, from Franklin Roosevelt, and it says the only limit to our realization of tomorrow is our doubts of today. So yes, doubts are very tricky because that's poison the mind, right? And it doesn't let us to achieve uh, anything what we uh, wanted to achieve in life. So it is uh, um, almost like killing your ambition. And Saturn, actually, Capricorn, Saturn is very ambitious. So because of the square of the Neptune, I chose that right now, because Neptune is fogginess and Neptune could be really doubtful. Um, so Neptune could be actually the martyr, you know, self-pity. So yes, definitely there could be... Um, the explanation over here with this square, like, like we are not capable to move forward, we are paralyzed because of our fear and doubts. And uh, that could be the quote for the Capricorn for moon. All right, let's talk about right now the Sabian symbols, guys. The full moon going to take place at one degree and seven arc minutes. So the Sabian symbol between one and two degrees Capricorn is a free Actually, that is three rose crown golden ball. So this symbol represents the achievement of spiritual rewards through the combination of hard work. You know, Capricorn is, is, is really ambition and hard work and diligence. Um, so uh, definitely hard work many, many times are paying off in our lifetime. And you know what I tell to my boys all the time? When you succeed and you did everything on your own, of course, right now I remembered one of my favorite uh, a song, like I did it my way. So if you did it your way and if you did everything on your own, the, the sweetness of success is unbelievable. It's beautiful. So also let's talk about the one degree Capricorn. You know, I don't know if you guys... Um, know about the word axis. Most of you knows astrology very well, but if you are new to astrology, then I'm going to talk a little bit about the word axis because it's going to take place on the word axis. It's a degrees away uh, from the word axis. So it's still conjunct. And word axis refers, refers to four critical points in the zodiac that are considered highly significant for their global and collective impact, and also individual impacts as well. And the word axis actually, uh, the degree points of de uh, zero degree cardinal signs. So Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn are the cardinal sign of the zodiac. And zero degrees of these signs are the word axis. So, what is the significance of the word axis? So it could have some kind of global, collective, and personal impact. So for example, 
planets are significant point, just like the sun or moon, if it's conjunct with these degrees, it could influence global events, anything with trends, or also with your personal individual experience. It is karmic degree. It is a new beginning. Um, so if there is a transit right now, the full moon is happening over there, then we could uh, actually expect some kind of shift in geopolitical, you know, social or environmental areas. Uh, so uh, the other thing is over here. Uh, let's see what else is happening. Let's let's talk about uh, uh, not the word axis anymore, but let's talk about the full moon in Capricorn and let's talk about the archetypes over here. So, for example, the full moon in Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, right? The moon is in fall, the moon is in rulership in Cancer and it's opposing right now to Cancer. And uh, in mythology, Saturn, in Roman mythology, but in uh, Greek mythology, we call Saturn Kronos. It is the, the god of time and discipline and order and lord of karma. Uh, he is associated with limitation and responsibilities. Uh, Saturn myth involves his uh, eventual overthrow by his son Jupiter. Zeus is in Greek mythology Jupiter, right? And uh, uh, he overthrow his father because Saturn wanted to actually ate all his children, but Jupiter and Jupiter actually uh, helped them to escape Saturn. But anyway, Jupiter was the one who overthrew Saturn and killed him. And another thing what I have to mention over here, because by I started to build up uh, this podcast, I saw Saturn in Pisces right now, right? Transiting Pisces. And it is um, uh, conjuncting Nessus. Uh, Nessus was a centaur in uh, Greek mythology. And uh, he was killed by Hercules. Um, but as he was dying, Nessun actually tricked Hercules' wife and told her his blood will help Hercules' fidelity. So, you know, because of uh, Hercules' wife was jealous because there was a lot of infidelity in the marriage and, you know, said, okay, take my blood over here and then uh, give it to Hercules because it will actually help him to stay loyal to you. But actually, Nessus, uh, the blood was a poison. So eventually, um, um, what is that Hercules' wife uh, started to poison uh, Hercules, her husband, and she didn't even uh, knew about that. So Nessus actually represents betrayal and revenge and very toxic influences. So in, in Pisces right now, they're traveling together. And Saturn in Pisces actually brings the energies of discipline and structures in spiritual field. Anything to do with holistic medicine, anything to do with... Uh, um, holistic practice, anything to do with uh, underprivileged people, art as well. Um, and Nessus over here represents some kind of shadow uh, coming into our life, uh, something uh, what is shadowing or spirituality or beliefs. Maybe we're going to betray ourselves. It is a self-sabotaging behavior. Because, you know, Nessus over here wants to diminish Saturn. Saturn wants to have boundaries in Pisces. Pisces doesn't understand boundaries. Very compassionate, you know, uh, very subconscious. And, and Saturn over here, okay, let's have structure. But Nessus is like, no, 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 let's betray this. Let's manipulate you. And, you know, like hidden toxicity, hidden enemies. Oh, my God, hallelujah. This is this is very, very karmic year for us, for all of us. And that is what is actually leading the full moon. That is the theme of the full moon. And if I go further with this, and if we are talking about the archetype 
over here, and we were already talking about Saturn is ambition and discipline and structure and karma and long term goals as well, diligence as well, not only fears and bad, Saturn could be really good as well, because eventually it rules the 10th house and it's honor and recognition. So it could bring in honor and recognition, achievement, but with hard work. If you skip a step with Saturn, guys, you don't. You cannot skip any steps. You cannot take a leap of faith because you have to go through every single structures to achieve what you need to achieve in public status. You know, you can get nominated Nobel Prize, red carpet, anything with Saturn intense or with Saturn prominent in your chart, but you cannot for sure skip any, uh, any steps. So, you know, and it is squaring with Neptune. And actually, Neptune also is in traveling with uh, with Nessus and with Saturn in Pisces, and Neptune rules Pisces. Neptune is the higher octave of uh, Venus, higher octave of love. It is total forgiveness. It is the Mother Teresa, the martyr, okay? Uh, <clears throat> Neptune can be very complaining. I know a lot of people with a lot of Neptunian energy Gs they are constantly complaining. But, you know, Neptune is also illusion, delusion. It's addiction as well. And your dreams and your, 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 your artwork, your, your spiritual, um, like lucid dreaming and your prophetic dreaming as well. But Neptune, because it's illusion, it could create uh, and indicate confusion and also deception as well. Because Neptune could be escapism, escapism with some kind of uh, substance, anything with pharmaceutical drugs or alcohol, escapism, right? It's it's what it is. But Neptune also the mystic and the compassion as well. But the square between uh, the full full moon and between um, um, Neptune over here. Uh, could be something to do with, and you know, it is an out of sign square because originally the energy of Capricorn and Pisces are sextiling. This is a good energy, but because of Neptune is 29 minutes, uh, 49, uh, 29 degree, 49 arc minutes, and, and Capricorn is one minute, uh, I mean one degree, this is creating a square between them, but out of sign, right? So, we're going to experience some kind of, we, definitely we will have some kind of artistic inspiration because the full moon itself, it's an ending, it's a, it's a subconscious, emotional, very, very deeply emotional aspect itself in the sky. But full moon is a completion. So, you know, we might going to actually experience some kind of, um, um, connection between each others, but it's not necessarily going to be conscious. It could be unconscious. So I could imagine like a lot of people uh, going to dream the same dream. And on social media, they're going to share their dream and they are like, oh my God, that's what I had. And it's a prophetic dream. We find out and, you know, something what will happen eventually on earth, but a lot of people going to call that or recall it from the universe, from the universal knowledge, uh, uh, from above, from heaven. Uh, yeah, so definitely it's, but the square aspect, because it's uh, um, like Mars natured, Marcian natured, it's a tension, right? It is also initiator and a bold and aggressive energy, um, but it is a tension, definitely. And, you know, Capricorn itself, it's something to do with practicality and tangibleness. And, and um, Neptune is absolutely, and also Pisces is absolutely like fantasies and dreams and, and you know, nothing to do with tangible energy, more like occult and mysticism. So those two going to crash. And because it's influenced, unfortunately, by three very bad uh, uh, asteroids, I'm going to talk about Ixion and Icarus as well. We already talked about Nessus on Saturn. But first, I would like to talk about the fixed star and Spiculum. Spiculum, uh, spiculum uh, means in Latin spear. 
you know, speed is something what can uh, actually spear you and uh, it could hurt you. Um, so definitely this is not necessarily a good fix star we are talking about here. Uh, this is a malefic influence from this uh, star. It has a Mars and Moon uh, flavor, said um, Ptolemy. But, um, you know, it, it could bring in some kind of intense energy challenge and and uh, and uh, wounds, but it has to be some kind of physical wounds uh, with this um, uh, fixed star. Uh, so then moon conjunct speculum in astrology, um, there could be some kind of danger and potential danger in our life coming in. But also because of... Um, it, um, like Saturn is, uh, and uh, Capricorn definitely is courage as well, and, you know, ambition as well, it could be like we are going to take some kind of ambitious uh, uh, leap here, which is like we are skipping the steps, right? And that could actually... Uh, make us fall. So speculum is the spear and that is like, okay, it's going to make us wounded because it's very, very ambitious and courageous and bold energy. But because of that, we are skipping steps and we are going to uh, somehow uh, fall back to the zero point. So make sure you are not doing that. All right, so what else we can talk about that? You know, that is also could indicate some kind of issue with eyes and ears and chronic illnesses. So during this time, and because of the moon represents the public in general, that is the people, uh, also dogs as well, but it could bring in some kind of uh, illnesses as well, some kind of health issues in healthcare right now. So, but anything to do with, with ear and eye infections, for example, which could uh, manifest to chronic condition later on if we are not going to recognize that in time. Um, there is always going to be some kind of addiction and self-destruction with speculum and, uh, and the moon over here because the moon itself represents your subconscious and your emotion and your emotions are leading to, and because of the moon is ruled by Saturn, which is in Pisces, which is addiction. So that's why I think it could create some kind of addiction and self-destruct, self-sabotaging behavior, anything to do with drugs and escapism. So during this full moon, we really need to be careful. Now, and you know, it's not necessarily we know about the substances. So be careful what do you expect from other people, because it could be fentanyl in it, God forbid, or, you know, some kind of drugs in your drinks. So definitely uh, could represent that. All right, so let's talk about Icarus right now, because Icarus also conjunct the, the full moon. Icarus in Greek mythology um, um, had actually a tragic flight because... Um, Icarus received the wing from his father, and it was crafted by his father, right? And his father used uh, feathers and wax. But the father told him not to fly too close to the sun because the sun is really hot, and, uh, you know, he could get in trouble. But Icarus did not listen to his father, absolutely not listen, totally ignored his advice. So, you know, when you are really, really happy about something, you can fly and you can reach higher and higher point. Probably that's how he felt. So he kept flying and flying. He was thrilled as he could fly and he got very close to the sun. Besides, you know, all the advice. So he soared high and what's happened? The sun melted his wax and what Icarus, you know, he, he fell. And he fell into the sea, and what's happened? He drowned. So 
this myth actually symbolizing the consequences of overambition and, you know, also not listening. So when Icarus conjunct full moon, there could be multiple implication in our life and uh, the, it could uh, actually play out uh, uh, multiple different way. So there could be uh, some individuals to pursue their goals free, fearlessly and uh, doesn't matter if somebody is warned against reckless behavior, they don't listen and they going to bring trouble on themselves and fear. Uh, breaking boundaries, you know, because of that, what Icarus did over here, he wanted to break free from limitation and he felt the freedom with his wing, what his father uh, made him. Uh, but he overestimated his abilities, unfortunately, and ignorance would be actually a self-betrayer behavior. So be careful to be open-minded and not to be ignorant because then you create challenge in your, in your life. Um, you know, there is also Icarus uh, serves as a cautionary tale against Habris, under this influence, there is potential for overreaching and facing the consequences of the, uh, you know, ignoring practical advices, ignoring your your father, your 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 wise people advice around you, ignoring your astrologer, your doctor's advice, uh, and go against their advice and uh, with your forceful will, and you create terrible challenge in your life. All right. And then what else could happen over here? If I want to be very, very practical, you know, like uh, you might be a professional who, and, and you know, maybe even uh, someone who, who is uh, chose a career like a psychologist and you are... Um, taking a bold leap in your... No, actually, you are giving an advice to someone in your, in your profession if you are a therapist, and uh, that advice actually going to... Um, you want to do good for the person as a therapist, but somehow you create um, uh, with your advice or with your therapy some kind of setback in their life. Um, all right, and the other one we are going to talk about, the other one is going to be Ixion, uh, because it's also going to conjunct the, the full moon in Capricorn. And uh, Ixion in Greek mythology was a king who committed crimes, including murder of his father-in-law. So despite being forgiven by Zeus, which is Jupiter, and given a place on Mount Olympus, Ixion anyway tried to seduce Hera. Hera is Zeus' wife, Jupiter's wife, right? Uh, Juno, and other name. And, you know, Zeus got very, very angry at Ixion and uh, actually did a punishment. And... Uh, um, um, tangled him to a spinning wheel for eternity, but it was a fiery spinning wheel. And uh, it is symbolizing the consequences of immoral action and not being grateful for someone, you know, in your life. Um, that kind of punishment I kind of like somehow. I don't know why I feel really close to this, but I do believe, you know, Ixian deserved to be punished like that. And, and I love the consequences here with this myth. So, you know, when Ixion is conjunct the full moon, there could bring light to ethical issues, integrity. You know, a lot of people going to lose integrity and uh, there is going to be a lot of betrayer and moral fallings and failings in, 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 uh, in people's life. You you know what you're going to see? I mean, I don't know if you saw movies from the Second World War and after when the Russians invaded Hungary and many countries, you know, there was the Gestapo, there was, you know, 
like different kind of um, um, secret agencies and people actually tell on to each other. And, and that's what I see right now with this Ixion energy. They're going to spit on your back and talking behind you and report you to the police and, and those kind of situation. And, you know, there was a redemption and forgiveness in this story because of Zeus at the beginning forgive Ixion and give him an other chance, a second chance, but he didn't live with this second chance. And, uh, you know, that is like we keep making the same mistake and we we are not learning from our mistake. And, and you know, it could actually emphasize that like, all right, uh, go within and try to learn right now because otherwise it's going to make you fail in life. So that's that could be uh, an issue over here. And the Capricorn moon, actually, you know, because it's Saturn, there is boundaries and restric restriction and limitation. So actually, Ixian, who was a criminal, there definitely is going to be something like, uh, you know, we are responsible for our behavior. But also, I would think that it's going to be a lot of people who got a second chance from the public or in general, but they're going to go to court again and they're going to be convicted. So I like that because there is a lot of people who are criminals, like, you know, O.J. Simpson. I just saw the whole documentary, but the sisters did. And, and I was like, oh, my God, there were so many uh, signs. He killed the wife and they let him off. And, they, you know, he got incarcerated anyway, but with some stupid stuff after that. But... Um, so there is like, finally, that it's going to be like, all right, you know, like you did something, we forgive you, we let you go of the hook, but second time we won't do that. And that is going to be a lot of very famous people because of, you know, Saturn is in Pisces, Pisces is famous people, um, you know, like uh, celebrities, like P. Diddy, like, all right, so not off from the hook. And that it's going to be a lot of other one who are going to get convicted right now. This is the karmic lesson, uh, you know, for your past action, because you didn't learn. You keep doing the same mistakes and you don't make amends. And, you know, uh, you don't do some kind of solid ethical foundation for your future. So you're done. I'm, I'm done with you. I'm not giving you any more uh, opportunity here. So that's what it means. All right. So let's analyze the... Mm, collective, the mundane astrology for, for the Capricorn moon, right? So let's see the geopolitical tension right now. You know, guys, there could be some serious tension between major world powers because of unclear or deceptive diplomatic communication, unfortunately. This might lead to international incidents, you know, like because of the negotiation, somehow it's transparent and, and it's going to, to create more conflict. In economic, uh, could be something to do with, um, uh, you know, some kind of strain and confusion in global markets. So because it's Saturnian energy, so delayed with shipments uh, out of uh, uh, prescription drugs. Um, and, you know, like... It could create some kind of issues with with the the boats itself on the sea. They can get affected by the war or pirates or whatever, and then we're not going to get shipment in time, and it's going to bring delay or you know some kind of a shake up in 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 global economic as well. And if we check the weather, you know, the moon is water. Saturn, actually, it's always creating boundaries and dry everything out. But Saturn is in Pisces right now, and the ocean is bigger than life. So definitely there is climate change. And Saturn is a cold energy. However, it could create some kind of uh, weather pattern, especially with the, the Nessus and Icarus and Ixion involved which is like um, uh, going to, to be a lot of floods, for example. Saturn is dryness, right? 
And for example, lack of rain before, and that I know it's gonna start to rain and the soil, Saturn, right? Because it's Capricornian energy, it's an earth energy, not capable to absorb the, the uh, rain, which is going to be like in three days, it's gonna be, I don't know, 25 inch of rain in some area, storms and floods, and it's gonna be a lot of flash uh, floods. And also because Saturn is earth and the soil, uh, with the water together, it could be a lot of mudslide, guys. So, yes, it could indicate some kind of challenge in, in weather. And, you know, because of Saturn is in uh, Pisces and it tries to create boundaries, but but Neptune over there totally not creating borders or boundaries, we're going to have a lot of climate refuges. So, for example, that it's going to be extreme weather and the sea level is rising, that it's going to be a lot of hurricane. I live in Florida and I'm getting ready right now for the hurricane season because we had a very cold winter and long. However, the, the temperature rise 107 in Miami uh, within a few days, you know, and it is very warm. Even the water temperature is very warm right now. And because we didn't have uh, rain for a long time, the soil is not capable to absorb. So I know I see little flats here and there on the streets. So the sea level, and we're going to have definitely climate refuges right now. And, you know, it also could bring in some kind of uh, volatile market right now because of... Uh, Saturn is the government, right? Uh, Pisces is inflation, anything to do with inflation. So there could be something to do with uh, misinformation about big companies or economic policies and people get scared and trying to take out everything from stock market. There is a huge inflation coming in or, you know, scare technique or, or you know, they're trying to take out the money from the bank. But Obviously, the bank is not capable to give everybody's money. If everybody goes in once, there is no money available because that's how they give mortgage to other people for more money that is in the bank. So that could create actually um, some kind of major volatility and issues on, on, on stock market and with banks as well. Um, yes. Uh, all right. So what else I wanted to... Ah, you know, Saturn in, in Pisces, it's cleaning up the water, for example, because of the pollution, but uh, because Saturn also government, it will lead to like, we're going to have some kind of new legal actions and laws, actually, not to do pollution in water, uh, because of uh, drinking water not going to be available soon if we are going to keep doing this shit what we are doing. We're going to have to be accountable for our actions on Earth. Uh, Mother Earth is a living being and we have to acknowledge that. Um, and, you know, there could be something with the pandemic response actually also because of the moon representing the public and Saturn is the government, right? And Capricorn is the government. So there could be something with public health measures, which is undermine efforts to control a pandemic, some kind of confusion and mis uh, misinformation or something with vaccination as well, uh, or vaccine disruption as well, because it could be limited because Saturn is Pisces, in Pisces representing limitation of uh, vaccination as well, uh, or, you know, it's got lost in the sea, or, you know, public skepticism is rising. Finally, they asking questions. Uh, so there could be some kind of isolation between people because of uh, vaccination and, and public health issues, you know, like uh, misinformation who is vaccinated, who is taking medicine, you know, like there is some kind of shitty steering here against us. Uh, so we need to improve our communication and be more clear or ask questions, guys. That's, you know, clear the questions. Did you mean this? What did you mean by that? Can you explain again? I don't understand. Things like that. And then you are clear. All right, guys. 
All right, I think uh, I'm going to go to each individual sign um, and I'm going to do a meditation. All right, Aries rising, sun and moon, full moon going to happen in your 10th house and Neptune is in your 12th house. So there could be sudden responsibilities at work, which is going to create some kind of mental st stress for you. Uh, you can get promoted, but you can be overwhelmed by promotion and you're going to start to, for example, drink at night. And, you know, you can have a self-sabotaging behavior because of your work. It could be some kind of confusion uh, or misunderstanding about your public image or reputation. So you have to try to do some kind of damage control over here. If you are taking a leadership role, because you might be trust upon that, uh, it could really, really challenge your uh, your um, head, because you're going to be very ambitious, right? And and your mental health could be in jeopardy. Um, it could be like struggle between your work and between your home and family life. Your family is going to miss you. You're going to only talk about your work and, you know, and on your promotion and they're not going to like that. Uh, so you could have some kind of issue with authority figures or mentors as well during this time. Because of, don't forget, Nessus on Saturn and Ixion and Icarus is conjunct with the moon. Uh, uncertainty about your career path. Uh, so you're going to need some kind of guidance and you can get the guidance actually from Neptune in the, in the, and it's not going to be Neptune in the 12th house, it's going to be in the second house. Uh, but am I saying, uh, and second house, anything to do with your uh, first house? All right, let me start again, guys. Capricorn is in your 10th house. Let me have the wheel again back. And Neptune is in Pisces. Oh, but it's a square, 12th house. Yes, I was right. I was right. Okay. Because it's an out of sign square. I was like, how can it possibly, but it's in, in one degree and 29 degrees. Yes, so 12th house and 10th house. Yes, so whatever I said, it was right. Um, all right, let me analyze uh, something more over here for you. You know, there could be some kind of hidden enemies, actually, who wants to sabotage your achievement because 12th house and 10th house. That could be also possible for you during this time. All right, Taurus rising, sun and moon. The full moon is in your ninth house. Neptune is in your 11th house. Confusion around higher education or long-term learning goals. Uh, you might going to change majors, okay? Because of you, or maybe even university because you feel like you don't belong from there. Uh, or you want to go wherever, you know, like uh, you had friends or lovers on the university, you broke up. And that's why you want to actually leave that uh, major or that uh, uh, university. <clears throat> Travel plans also can get disrupted and, and changed. Or if you are going abroad, you have to be carefully planning over here. Um, there could be something hidden, but you don't see to come actually during the travel. So be careful with hidden enemies coming out of nowhere. Uh, also, if you go to um, a retreat center, careful with, with uh, substances, careful with ayahuasca, you can have a bad experience. Legal matters and international dealings could face unforeseen complications requiring through review. So there could be something to do with uh, if you have a house in a foreign country or if you want to buy a home in a foreign country or if you want to move abroad, perhaps to purchase an island or just move in an island, you know, you have to hire the right uh, attorney over there not to make mistakes. 
you're also going to have a shift in your belief system. You might have been religious, but you might become spiritual. So, for example, from Christian, Christianism or Judaism, you can go to Buddhism because Buddhism is spirituality. There could be a lot of community influence, but it could be confusive because of they might not be, uh, you know, clear what they want and uh, what they request from you. Um, there could be also a project coming up with for you with publishing and broadcasting, but uh, but it has to do, you know, like it's going to get delayed or it's going to need uh, rewriting or some kind of adjustment over here. And uh, you can also reassess your long-term goals because something is not aligning with you at, the, at this moment, with your vision, with your values, and, and you have to recreate some something. Yes, I'm sorry. All right, Gemini rising, sun and moon. Full moon is in your eighth house. Neptune is in your tenth house. You know, full moon in the eighth house of um, uh, financial matters. It is stock market, taboo, sex, tax, debt, um, you know, medical malpractice, uh, insurance, uh, abortion, uh, surgeries, and detective work, psychological work. So, there could be some kind of issue with joint finances or, you know, debt. For example, you want to buy a house and you need to pay off the debt before. Um, and and it could be also like, all right, I want to get married, Neptune in the 10th house. That is my dream person. I'm changing my name. But, you know, the, the person wants to have a prenup and I don't want to have it. It feels really awkward and I'm hurt. Uh, definitely deep emotional, intimate issues can surface during this time but you know because of the Neptune is in the 10th house there could be like you are actually finding some kind of healing opportunity with a professional it could be a psychologist 8th house um, you know there could be some kind of issue also with inheritance and taxes maybe you you didn't do your taxes and you know you require I know some kind of audition at this moment, or some kind of expert advices. Uh, personal transformation might be challenged by professional obligation and public perception. Uh, there could be also a power struggle. It was always, always to do something with power struggles uh, and professional settings. Uh, that it, you know, that's going to, to demand strategic negotiation. You're going to have a lot of psychological insight as well, and you can actually um, uh, have someone who helps with hidden fears and with your anxieties. And, you know, the fears might going to affect your career. And if you would like to invest in corporate finances, anything to do to buy shares, be careful, because there could be some kind of unexpected complication. All right, Cancer Rising, Sun and Moon. The full moon is in your seventh house. Neptune is in your ninth house. Uh, there it's going to be a change in the relationship dynamic. Definitely, it could bring in some kind of professional relationship, something to do with uh, a new business partner, but there could be also issues with that business partner as well. Or maybe your significant other going to be actually jealous of your new business partner because you have to do a lot of traveling together and teach them together. <clears throat> Legal matters concerning partnership contracts might require careful adjustment over here. So if you are suing someone or if you are sued by someone, you might going to need paperwork to, to provide. Uh, there could be also some kind of um, issue with your relationship. So it could be like your significant other wants to move abroad and you don't want to move abroad because of his or her work uh, is uh, foreign based right now. There could be some kind of um, diplomatic efforts in resolving conflicts. Uh, and uh, it could be something to do with you have to hire a mediator in your marriage or, or maybe dif uh, diplomatic efforts resolving a conflict with your business partner as well. 
If you have any kind of joint project with your significant other or with a fan, uh, with a friend, it could face some kind of obstacles because you you don't have mutual understanding somehow right now. All right, what else? Um. You need to reassess definitely your long distance travel and also if uh, if you uh, want to go abroad to teach, you know, you might have to wait or in a foreign university um, or it could be something with your publication and issue with your passport as well coming up right now. Leo rising sun and moon is going to happen in your sixth house and eighth house. The full moon is in the house of health, work, daily routine, rental properties, and your pets. So confusion or issues at work. Uh, and it's going to require a lot of attention. And, you know, you need to be clear in communication. What's your desire? What's your needs? What do you expect from your co-workers? Or if you actually own a gym, yoga studio, uh, juice bar, whatever, you know, whoever you employ, you, may, you have to be really thrilled. Uh, you know, like, what kind of quality do you want in an employee? Um, because you might going to hire someone with addictions and you didn't see that. There it could be some kind of health matters coming up for you, but if it is, then it is definitely to do with, with uh, Neptunian energy uh, or Capricornian, so something to do with joint inf uh, in, um, joint issues, um, bone issues, or or addiction. Uh, and you know what? Because Neptune is involved, if you have an advice from a doctor, go and get another one because of, you know, and Neptune is in the eighth house, so it could be something with your sexual organs as well, or ovaries, or womb, or, you know, things like that. You might go into remove a cyst. But, um, but uh, go for second opinion, because the first one might be not valid. You have to adjust your daily routine, maybe because of a surgery. You had to have a surgery and you can't move as much as before. Um, so you have to accommodate yourself for some kind of unforeseen challenges. Um, you need to balance service to others with personal needs. You might have been a little bit selfish lately. And I know you realize the only way to strive is to also give. Um, if you have a lot of work right now, you need to balance that out because it could actually implement your health and you can uh, self-sabotage yourself, your own health, because of you are, uh, you know, like uh, too much responsibility at, at your work and with your colleagues or with your employees. You know what, if you would... Um, Incorporate some kind of spiritual holistic wellness in at work uh, with your employees or with your co-workers. It could actually have the whole entire uh, environment and it would help greatly for you. All right, Virgo rising sun and moon. The full moon is happening in your fifth house. Neptune is in your seventh house. Don't forget it is an out of sign square. Uh, that is fifth house is children, winning lottery, investment, your lover, and it is joy and pleasure and creativity, creative projects. So there could be some kind of issue with your muse, you know, like, for example, your creative project could have some kind of challenges because um, you have some kind of black or uh, lack of muse over here. Also, your romantic relationship could be very confusing right now. Some kind of misunderstanding. You have to be really honest with your lover. Or maybe because of you are married and, and, and the married partner found out you actually cheating. That could be definitely possible for you guys. Children and family, you know, there could be some kind of issue. Your, your kid is lying to you uh, because of Neptune could be lies as well. And, uh, or, you know, you are not realistic with, with your child's need or, or yes, with your child's need. So you, you need to clear your, your thinking and, and, you know, your, 
what you require from a kid. Maybe you're requiring too much and they are not old enough to, to, to have that much responsibility. Um, what else? Um, there could be some kind of issue with uh, managers and uh, and the agent. You might go in to fire them because they're lying to you, or you know, like they're drinking uh, and instead or doing self sub drogies, and you know they don't do anything for you. If you have a lot of social events, like there could be some kind of uh, gathering social event, but you can have some kind of complication on social event because of somebody is is talking behind you or gossiping and you will have to to clear that uh you know argument or or make sure uh you you clear your your reputation somehow in a social event there could be some kind of new hobbies uh coming into your life uh, but uh, but those new hobbies could be very short living as well and you know it could be if you are start to invest in something uh, there could be you know like some kind of issue where you put your money so for investment right now with neptune square i wouldn't really because somebody wants to get you into a business and you know then it's fake and they are just want your money and they steal your money all right, Libra rising, sun and moon, the full moon is in your fourth house, Neptune is in your sixth house. Uh, issues at home or with family may arise, needing practical solution and clear communication. Uh, you know, you might go in to sell your house also uh, as well, or, you know, because it's a full moon, it's a completion and Neptune, anything to do with uh, in six house with health, but mental health and Neptune itself rules the 12th house of eternal womb, it could bring in like uh, an, an inheritance or death of a, a parent figure as well. Uh, property, manners, uh, property matters or home repairs might require attention, but anything to do with water damage, for example, flood or breaking pipes, something like that in your house. Um, you know, uh, also uh, there could be something to do with if you really want to make sure the bond is uh, strong uh, with your family, you make to uh, you have to make sure you communicate clearly with them. Um, and there could be also some kind of security, financial security issues there in your family. And you have to talk about with all the members, you know, where is your fears coming from? You also need to balance health routine because of the six house involvement. Uh, you know, more responsibilities, but responsibilities for your well-being, because that is very, very necessary at this moment. Uh, if you would like to, you are capable to heal uh, karmic deaths, you know, your ancestral healing, uh, anything to do with patterns that your ancestral uh, have done previously. Uh, the family history uh, address that and and any kind of issues over there that was deep-rooted, you're capable to figure out and you're capable to promote healing right now with that. If you have domestic projects, anything to do with your house, with your living situation, with your stability. Uh, right now you are capable to start that because it's a square, so it's a Mars in nature, so it's a bold initiative energy. All right, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising. The Moon, the full Moon is going to happen in your third house. Neptune is in your fifth house of uh, uh, uh family, not family, but joy, pleasure, children, creativity, winning, investment, and full moon in the third house, anything to do with communication, neighborhood project, younger siblings, short distance traveling, skill-based or craft-based studying. All right, so there could be some kind of miscommunication. Neptune is involved in misunderstandings between your children and you or between your children and neighbor children they fighting and you have to stand between uh, in your sibling relationship could be an issue as my uh, as well you know you know like um, there is like a distance between you and your siblings there is no mutual understanding no mutual values anymore so you don't find resolution for an inheritance please 
uh, for example. Uh, there could be some kind of issue with traveling as well. You might want it to go somewhere, you know, not far away, but it could get delayed. Or, you know, you need a backup plan because of wherever you want it to go, it's under flood. Uh, Neptune, right? Neptunian energy. Um, you can actually pursue something with learning uh, and, uh, and uh, something to do with teaching as well. Uh, and it could be something to do with your creativity because fifth house. So, so you're going to learn maybe music, guitar, anything with instrument, writing lyrics, writing in general and publishing could be as well. Um, expressing your creativity through writing, speaking and communication uh, for you guys. Uh, and you can also go and get involved in a local project and you're going to be very assertive about that and you're going to be the initiator and advocate for that project. If you would like to get into media and technology AI, uh, you know, like learn, study AI, you're going to have a little bit of challenges, but you know, you're going to be determined eventually and, and study. All right, Sagittarius rising sun and moon. Uh, it's going to happen, the full moon is going to happen uh, in our second house and Neptune is in our fourth house of family and uh, and real estate and home and, uh, you know, home values. And the, in the second house, anything to do with your, your possession, with the money, what you earn, your values, the food you eat. So you might go in to give up some kind of food or start actually some kind of intermittent fasting. Um, but also it could have some kind of financial influence as well. And actually some kind of financial issues could rise for you guys and it could be unexpected, but you don't, didn't see to come. Uh, and because of some family members, maybe your mother needs money or your mother-in-law or you know whoever in the family, but you need to help them. And then it is like, oh my God, that was the money for this and this, and I cannot go to travel right now. Uh, definitely you have to assess your value, you know, but financial value over here. Um, because of, um, check your saving, check, you know, like what did you invest in and is it uh, long-term, short-term, and is it give you enough security? Can you withdraw money? You know, just reassess that. Also, your values is going to change because you're going to have different priorities right now in life. Uh, uh, also, uh, what I would think over here, it is a square, but, you know, we don't have to be square, uh, scared from the square. It is just an initiator, very courageous, uh, uh, energy so we want to have financial stability and growth in finances so we might going to invest in real estate and you know real estate would pay us very well um, anything to do with uh, property related matters uh, you know as I said investing in real estate it is a good realistic approach over here also, you might going to want to pay uh, to find someone from your family who got disappeared or 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 maybe, you know, you didn't know you have a brother or sister, but you just heard a gossip about that and you invest in that. Um, definitely, you're going to sit down with your family members and, and do a budget and, 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 you know, a plan, agreements between the family members like... Uh, uh, what do you need to spend money uh, weekly and how you're going to survive or do savings or invest in uh, things. But your self worth could definitely going to get uh, uh, impacted by this form. You're going to let go of uh, self-sabotaging, uh, discouraging self-behavior uh, and your self worth could actually uh, become better. Uh, definitely. You're going to honor yourself. You're going to recognize your qualities and your gifts finally. All right. Capricorn rising sun and moon. We go. You're going to have that in your first house, full moon, and Neptune is in your third house. Third house is your, first house is your identity and self. Uh, third house is anything to do with communication, craft, and skills, and vehicles, and neighborhood, and siblings, and and uh, aunt and niece and uh, you know relatives so 
you're going to reassess personal goals and ambitions to ensure they align with the realistic expectation and values for yourself. Your public image is changing. Your personal image is changing. You're making necessary adjustment, adjustment right now. Uh, and uh, the way you are express yourself, uh, your communication skill going to be more efficient and it's going to be like uh, swept up people from their leg. Um, you're going to have a lot of local connection who want you to achieve, who want you to succeed. And strengthening your connection actually will help you to promote your business or promote, you know, uh, um, you're going to get support from, from friends and from your community for your business. Um, there is a lot of personal growth going right now. Uh, you can integrate creativity and uh, practicality right now in your business or in your daily routines as well. You are capable also exploring and clarifying personal identity and how it's aligned with public roles and responsibilities in your life. You also must focus on your health and well-being, and you can integrate actually holistic and Western medicine right now. Aquarius rising sun and moon, full moon is in your 12th house, Neptune is in your second house, 12th house is your subconscious, the underprivilege, hospice, hospital, uh, hospitality, hotels, jail, uh, you know, orphanages, um, homelessness, arts, script writing, music. And Neptune is in the second house of values and, and uh, the money you earn. So it is a deep inner reflection and addressing subconscious fears and anxieties right now. You are capable to develop some kind of spiritual practice. And it could be a new spiritual practice. And you can also promote your inner peace and understanding your, your inner self during this full moon, that it's going to be a lot of lucid dreaming. You might going to go and invest in a retreat. You might going to have an ayahuasca retreat, you know, to open your third eye. You will going to use your intuition to make financial decisions. And that is the balance between the practical and spiritual for you this month. Uh, also, you can take some kind of volunteer activities, it, a homeless shelters, orphanages, something what is very compassionate and it is serving the community. You can also discover hidden talents, anything to do with skills or anything to do with, uh, with writing and music and art or photography, because 12 houses is photography as well. Um, you know, promote personal growth and transformation is definitely uh, magnified right now during this full moon for you. Um, yeah. All right. Last but not least, my beautiful Pisces rising sun and moon full moon is in your 11th house. Neptune is in your first house. All right, 11th has anything to do with your uh, community, social interaction, social event. It is gain from your career. It is a promotion from your career, money from your career. And also it is luck as well and long-term wishes and aspiration. And Neptune in the first house of identity and self uh, values and the way you represent yourself to the public. So you're going to reassess goals related to community involvement or social causes to ensure alignment with your personal values. Also, there could be some kind of challenges within social networks or friendship right now. And you need to actually become clear in your communication and definitely make sure you have mutual understanding with your tribe. Uh, you know, balancing public roles and personal identity could be actually a little bit difficult because maybe you're going to become a little bit famous and or you're going to get a lot of followers and, and, you know, then your ego going to grow. So please stay humble, Pisces, okay? Uh, 
Uh, it could be also you are exploring some kind of personal vision and uh, ideas, integrating them with practical goals and actions. So you're going to dream big and uh, you may be also going to have uh, and write up a plan, a business plan to create a healing village. But, you know, you have to be put that in action. You have to start to ask people who wants to invest in your healing village. Um, that's definitely uh, you have to clarify your personal identity and how it aligns with social roles and responsibilities. You can engage in group projects or you can collaborate with people who are very similar, who has mutual respect and and uh, mutual values and together you can create a positive change in others life and it's it's a growth collectively okay you can do a vision board so yeah this could be very good for you pisces rising sun and moon all right let's use and talk about the herbs and stones that we can use during this full moon we're going to use uh, definitely Capricorn and Saturn related herbs and, and teas. Teas or infusions. So you brew herbal teas actually with thymes or sage or wintergreen. And you know, that's all have uh, healing properties over here, but that's Saturnian energy. And you can use that during this full moon. You can use essential oils, anything to do with juniper or cypress. Uh, and actually, I would say, because Saturn is in Pisces, Pisces is uh, pharmaceuticals, Saturn is uh, pharmaceuticals, but was applied or subscribed by the government. So that is the COVID vaccination. And cypress over here, if you heard about the a spike protein, what was actually the base of the COVID virus, you can actually clean that out either if you had vaccination or if you had COVID virus, we all have spike protein in us. So you have to drink a white fur tea, so anything to do with a Christmas tree, Christmas tree uh, tea, okay? Infuse the, the, the pine and, and drink it, and it helps to clear the spike protein. It purifies your body. Anything to do with Saturnian stone and jewelries, you, you can have uh, garnet, uh, you can have black onyx, you can have uh, black obsidian, anything to do with smoky quartz, fluorite as well, could be really good during that meditation. Uh, black onyx, hematite, hematite could be also very good for Saturnian energy. All right, guys, <laughs> let's do a meditation. You can put up any kind of music, as I said before, right? And uh, usually right now I do a meditation. Right now we're going to meditate on a Capricorn full moon and we're going to concentrate on, on courage, on uh, uh, determined energy, like uh, you're going to be very diligent and, and, you know, like for your ambition to get honor and recognition during this full moon. Uh, so that's the base of this, uh, of this um, meditation right now. So I would like to find a comfortable place you can sit or lay down. If you lay down, you might going to actually fall asleep. But uh, if you want to sit, you don't have to cross your limbs at all. You can open up your palms, receive the energy, and you can imagine you are a mountain. It's peak hidden in the clouds. The air is crisp and cool with a gentle breeze carrying the earthy scent of pine trees and fresh soil. The sky above is illuminated by the radiant full moon in Capricorn, casting a silver glow over the landscape. In the distance, you hear the soothing sound of flowing river, its water shimmering under the moonlight. Take a deep breath in. Feeling the cool mountain air 
Fill your lungs. Exhale slowly, releasing any tension or stress. With each breath, feel yourself becoming more grounded and centered, connected to the earth beneath your feet. Visualizing your path. Begin to work along a well-trodden path that winds up the mountain. The path is lined with ancient, sturdy trees, their roots deeply embedded in the earth, symbolizing stability and strength. As you walk, notice the solidity of the ground beneath you. Each steps affirming your connection to the stable energy of Capricorn. As you ascend, a gentle mist begins to envelop the path, softening the edges of your surroundings. This mist represents the influence of Neptune, adding a layer of mystery and uncertainty. Instead of feeling loss and fear, allow yourself to embrace this mist, knowing it is part of your journey. Trust that the path will guide you. After a while, the mist begins to clear and you find yourself in a beautiful clearing. In the center of the clearing is a serene, reflective pool water, perfectly sealed and mirroring the full moon above. This pool represents Neptune's energy, inviting you to look within and explore your inner depths. Sit by the pool and gaze into the depth. Allow your thoughts and emotion to surface, acknowledging them without judgment. The combination of the Capricorn full moons, clarity and Neptune's intuitive insight creates a perfect space for reflection. Ask yourself, what structure in my life provides stability and strength? Where do I need to bring more discipline and focus? How can I integrate my dreams and intuition into my practical plans? As you reflect, a gentle light begins to glow from the pool illuminating your heart and mind. Feel this light infusing you with wisdom and clarity, dissolving and confusing the uncertainty. Trust in your ability to navigate the balance between practicality and intuition. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, exhale. When you are ready, stand up and begin to descend the mountain. The path is now clear and you walk with a renewed sense of purpose and direction. The full moon shines brightly above, guiding your steps, by Neptune's mist has integrated harmoniously, adding a touch of magic to your journey. Gradually bring your awareness back to the present moment. Feel the solidity of the ground beneath you, the rhythm of your breath and heartbeat, and the calmness within. Take a deep breath in 
and exhale, exhale. Gently open your eyes, carrying the wisdom and clarity of your meditation with you. Take a deep breath in. While you exhale, let go of all anxiety, struggle that you were carried for a long time. All right, guys. Thank you so much to being with me and giving me opportunity to guide you and giving me trust as well, because I truly appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to come back with another video, which is going to be the Mercury and uh, Venus conjunction. And after that, I'm going to have a very long video about the Uranus and Mars conjunction before I go for a vacation. So I'm going to post everything before. Thank you so much for listening, subscribing, liking, being with me, supporting me and my work. I hope I see you soon. Maybe you're going to actually not only subscribe, but have a reading with me. All right, bye for now.